So the Sony A9G Master Series OLED TV has been constantly praised as the best TV of 2019, but it's kind of expensive, so it's not for everyone. But they also released the A8G, which is another OLED TV, which isn't quite as expensive, but it also doesn't have all the same features. So the question is just how good is it? Well, today we take the first step in finding that out. Stick around. Perfect. Hey guys, it's the Villa Man here, home theater enthusiast and all around tech lover and on this channel we bring you the tech of entertainment so we do unboxings like this, demos, comparisons, tips as well as real world reviews of the tech that entertains you so you can find the best devices and get the most out of them. So if you're into that and new to the channel then hit that subscribe button and come along for the ride. So after reviewing and comparing the LG C9 OLED and the Samsung Q90R QLED, I wanted to check out Sony's offering. So here we are with the A8G OLED TV. Now this is a 65 inch version and it supports all the major formats of HDR, including HDR10, Dolby Vision and Hybrid Log Gamma, HLG, like this video. But we'll talk about those specs later for now. Let's open up this box and see what's inside. And for that, of course, I will need my trusty unboxing knife. That was just a piece of cardboard to hold things in place. First off, we have the quick setup guide. But you don't need this because that's why I'm here. So in the bag we have the old style remote, IR extension cables, power cable, pieces of the stand, and of course, AAA batteries. All right, now styrofoam time. So Sony TV boxes, are held together by four clips at the base. So one in each corner basically. So once you remove those four clips, they'll be good to lift off. Just pinch, pull out, and remove it. I don't know, something about having a TV unsecured and walking away makes me kind of nervous, but I'll get over it. So the last piece remaining before we remove the TV is... Not that, but the stand that's placed at the back. Now this styrofoam did not survive. Yeah, that happens sometimes. Before I even lift the TV, I have to make sure I have a flat surface to place it on. So use the box that it came in if you don't have one yourself and just put the styrofoam inside it to create a secure and solid surface to install the TV stand. Strategically, of course. And then when you're done, black surface. But if you've seen my other unboxing videos, you should know that. So before you lift the TV out of the box, then the last thing you have to do is remove this piece of cardboard. And I want to make sure that I have the TV secure when I remove it, so of course I'll need help. Because the last thing you want to do is make a very expensive TV just fall flat on its face. Yeah, no. Now let's get this plastic off so we can install the stand. So the first thing we'll have to do is use four of the included screws that came in the packaging to connect the stand mount to the stand so we can connect it to the TV, like this. As you can see, it can only be installed one way. So there's an outline right here, which lines up with the shape of the stand mount. And you place it on here and start to screw it. So you'll see these two indentations line up with these two dimples. And one in the back. And we do the same thing to the other side. Yeah. 
So now that the mounts are connected to the stand, we have a decision to make. And that decision is, how high from the base of the stand do you want your TV to sit? Because it has two heights. Option one would be having this fastening screw inside this cutout. So it would be at a higher position. Or option two is turning the stand around and having the screw in this cutout. In, you can see right here. So that would make it lower. So let me show you what I mean. Option one, and we see how the screw is, and we see how close to the TV the stand is. Barely enough to fit my finger, but then I gonna have huge fingers. Option two, stand up this way and as you can see there is a lot more space so with the feet or with the prongs facing outwards towards you you have a higher TV and with the actual curved part of the stand this part outwards you have a lower mount so it's all up to you I think I'll go with the lower mount once you make your choice, you use the remaining four screws and fasten the stand. I'm done. The TV only comes in a 55 and 65 inch screen size. It has four HDMI ports, which are HDCP 2.3 compliant, with HDMI 3 having the audio return channel. It has the X1 Extreme processor to handle picture and upscaling, and Sony's acoustic surface technology with actuators behind the screen to produce the sound. It's IMAX enhanced compatible and runs Android OS, and has support for Google and Alexa voice assistants. So setup time. Wants to turn on my receiver, not yet. Hold your horses. All right, first thing is to select your language and whether you're gonna set up with an Android phone or tablet. And since I have an iPhone, then that's a no from me. But the good thing is, if you actually do have an Android device, then you can sign into it. Um, you can sign into the TV with it, and then you will have everything transferred over. So there'll be no need to go through all of this setup that we're about to go through right now. But since um, I have an iPhone, let's proceed the long way. And yes, I know Wi-Fi is spelled incorrectly, but it's a joke at this point. <laughs> so I want you to sign in with your Google account if you have one, so you can make the most of your TV, have personalized apps and all of that. But I don't want to do that right now, so... I mean, you can do it if you want, of course, but I'll skip it for this. It's very interesting that you have no other option but to accept the terms of service. Huh. So if you want to enable your location, that will permit you to have Google suggest um, local programming, whether um, that be streaming content or live programming for you. I'll keep it enabled so I can see how well it works. But you may or may not want to do that also. Help improve Android performance? Sure. Now I will call this the Media Room TV. Ah, so 
in this case, Sony is asking you to permit them uh, to use your data in certain ways. So for smart TV services, program recommendations, or advertisement. And since I don't like any of these per se, I'll just proceed. Yes, because the TV is voice enabled or the remote control, I should say, is voice enabled. So you can actually use that for the smart assistants like Alexa or Google Assistant. So my TV will receive programming through a set-top box. And if you don't have, say, um, cable, a cable box hooked up um, to your TV, then you can skip that option. But since I have my cable box connected to HDMI 2, then I will set it up right here. Make sure it's powered on. I don't want to connect the IR blaster though. So if you want to use the TV remote to control your cable box, then you'll need to connect the IR blaster that came inside the box. You have no other choice because it will not let you proceed unless you connect it. I just have it dangling in the back. Let's see how well it works. Once you enter your zip code, then you can select your service provider. It looks like this thing needs to have the IR blaster directly in front of your device, which I'm not prepared to do, so whatever. I do not want to enable Samba Interactive TV, thank you. I don't need to see what's trending on my TV, but if you want to, there's always an option to do that with the Samba Interactive TV. So first impressions of this TV, as you can see, the picture is absolutely stunning. The contrast just make everything just pop off the screen. Speaking of the screen, it's actually not as reflective as the X950G was because I remember there being a lot more reflection on that TV when I had it in the room. As far as the design is concerned, well, Sony does design really well and you can tell with this TV also because it has a very sleek design. It's very minimalistic as you can see with the stand protruding right there and the absolutely thin bezels except for these black bars on the side but whether it be the side profile or a straight on look it is definitely a looker what i don't really like about this tv so far though is they included the old style remote not the one that's included with the x950g the newer one which doesn't have or doesn't need line of sight to communicate with the tv this one does so let's see if i turn up the volume and cover this then see nothing happens the acoustic surface sound is actually pretty convincing. It is very good for built-in sound. You can actually definitely use it to play things like TV and not necessarily use your external sound system. But for movies, of course you'll need that Dolby Atmos sound, of course. As far as upcoming videos, so November is going to be an absolutely crazy month because there are a bunch of videos I want to make and a lot of them will include this TV. So I want to do a bunch of comparisons. As far as videos with this TV is concerned, there's going to be the gaming demo, of course, and there's also be the screen test, of course. But then I also want to do a comparison with the competition out there. So whether that be QLED, like the Vizio that I currently have in the process of reviewing right now, or the TCL mini LED TV, which is about to be delivered right here any day now it's going to be a crazy month so let me know your thoughts in the comments about this tv if it's one on your short list to get this year or anytime soon or any other tv for that matter don't forget to like the video if you like the video and subscribe for all the absolute madness that's about to happen in november until next time this has been your friend in neighborhood villa man saying peace